Good evening. My name is Jenny Fister, and if you've been watching the last few weeks, you know that I've been filling in for Greenbrier Almond, but he will be back next week doing his own show. On a really fun note, I just want to share with you that we have decided as Brushstroke Ministries that we are going to have our own show beginning next Thursday, uh, March 21st at 6 o'clock. We will be continuing this type of show uh, each week on Thursday evenings. It's going to be called One Brushstroke at a Time, where I'm going to try to give you the Word of God, painting a beautiful picture of the Word and of the Lord and of our lives, one brush stroke at a time. So beginning next Thursday, March 21st, 6 o'clock here, uh, we're going to be doing a show, a uh, Bible study, do a little singing, um, have the brush stroke worship team come in. Uh, I might do a couple things, might have some guests on with me, but we are planning on doing just a half hour show of the Word of God, um, putting it out there, planting seeds as, as many as we possibly can. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited that God God has opened this amazing door for brushstroke. Um, anyway, let's get started tonight. This is my, like I said, this is my last study here for Bring Greenbrier Show, and he'll be back next week. I'm going to do a study tonight called "The Lord Is My Shepherd" and so much more. Well, have you ever wondered why the 23rd Psalm is so well known? Why it captivates so many hearts? It's recited at funerals. It's recited at weddings sometimes. Uh, even unbelievers can quote part of the 23rd Psalm. Um, it captivates the heart of the redeemed of Christ. Um, what if I told you if it's because the fullness of God dwells in those six verses? Because the 23rd Psalm is just six verses long, but in those verses, God has packed the entire fullness of himself. In other words, every aspect of who God is, is, is just in that, those six verses. Every part, every character trait of God is in there. Now, through the Old Testament, God identifies himself by what are called the Jehovah names of God, where he says, like, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, that is Jehovah-Rohi in the Hebrew. And so all of, there are 12 Jehovah names of God that he identifies himself with in the Old Testament that he has put into this 23rd Psalm. So I'm going to just very quickly touch on the 12 Jehovah names of God that appear in this, in this Psalm. Because once you see the fullness of God, the completeness of God, and then what that means for us is going to overwhelm you. It, it is so powerful a psalm. It is so powerful a truth that it's really all we need to know. In those crisis moments when you can't think to pray anything else, if you can just learn to pray the 23rd Psalm, if you just open it up and you pray that psalm and you go, God, this is what I need from you. He's there and he shows up in that fullness. So let me just take you through the Jehovah names of God. This is so, so beautiful, a tapestry woven for us. Of course, it starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. And in the Hebrew, that is Jehovah-Rohi, the Lord, the shepherd. The Lord is the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd, and he's the chief shepherd. In Psalm 23, that shepherd tenderly cares for us, his sheep. In Psalm 24, he is the chief shepherd, and he appears as the king of glory to his, to his sheep. There are just moments in our lives where we need someone to guide us. Lord, where am I to go next? What job should I take? Where should I move? What college should I go to? What is my next move in ministry? We need a shepherd, someone who will take care of us and guide us and direct us and care for our needs. That's what a shepherd does. The Lord is my shepherd. Sometimes all I need to know is that the shepherd is taking care of this one sheep, that he is nurturing me and protecting me from the enemy, that he has guided me into the sheepfold. Jesus says that the sheep know my voice and they listen to it. They can hear it and they obey it. Sometimes all I need is to hear his voice. Jehovah-Rohi, the Lord, the shepherd. And then it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
That is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Jehovah Jireh, this is the name that Abraham called God. And you remember the story when Abraham went to sacrifice his son Isaac and God provided a ram in the thistle bushes? And Abraham said, oh, this is my God, the Jehovah Jireh, who has provided what I've needed. Sometimes all I need is for God to show me his provision. You know, it says in the New Testament in Philippians that God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we just need that provider. God, I need this in my life. Lord, I must have this or this will happen. Not, not just wants and desires, but needs. He is the Jehovah Rapha, the uh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, the provider. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores and he leads me beside still waters. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. We live in turbulent times with turbulent waters, whirlwinds and storms that sweep through our lives. And there are moments that we just need the calmness and stillness of our Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. The book of Ephesians says that we, our feet are, are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, we walk with peace. And it says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under our feet. Sometimes we just have to have the enemy set aside, <clears throat> departed from us, so that we can just lay down beside the still waters. Jehovah Rapha, uh, Rohi, the Lord, the shepherd. Jehovah Jireh the Lord, my provider, and Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace. It says he restores my soul. The word for healing in Hebrew is Rapha. He is the Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals, the Lord who heals. Jehovah Rohi, the shepherd, Jehovah Jireh, provider, Jehovah Shalom, the peace, and now we see Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, the healer. We need healing, physical and spiritual, emotional, mentally. We need to be healed. There, we just lay in our beds and go, God, I need healer. Or we weep before him because we're emotionally just so broken. Only Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, the healer, can heal and restore. He guides me. The Bible, this is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake. Jehovah Tekinu, the Lord, the righteousness. Now, when you think about righteousness, which really just means right living, the Bible says in Isaiah that our righteousness, the way that we think, the way that we live, and the way that we talk, and the way that our personality is, we're filthy rags. That's what my righteousness equates to. Filthy, dirty, stinking rags. In other words, take, take a rag, go clean a bathroom, go clean your kitchen with one rag. Take that, ba that rag, put it in a plastic bag, and stick it in your backyard outside for three or four days in the blinding sun. And then take that rag out and look at it all yucky and dirty and moldy and stinky and smelly. And God says, that's what your righteousness, my righteousness, looks like. But he says that his righteousness is a beautiful, white, clean, and bright robe. And so when he says that he restores my soul and he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, what he's saying is he guides me in the right way, right living, right talking, right acting, right works, right thinking. That's what his righteousness does. As Jehovah Tekinu, he is leading me in the paths of righteousness. I don't have to think about what my righteousness is like. I just have to be concerned with his righteousness and how the Bible says he wraps me in the white robe of righteousness. That's who I am in him, and that's who he is to me. Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, and Jehovah Tzikinu. 
so far the fullness of God. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. The word there is Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is here. The Lord who is here. That is so powerful. If I have someone in the hospital and I'm there praying for them, he's the Jehovah Shema. He's here. If I'm in my house, he's Shema, here. If I'm in my car, he is Shema, here. If I'm in my office, he's Shema, here. If I'm at work, he's Shema. Wherever I am, he is the Jehovah Shema, the one who is here, not there, not over there or, or just here. He is the one who is here, right here for us. That is so powerful. Because sometimes I feel like I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm not supposed to fear even. I don't mean death in the physical sense, but when dreams die or emotions die or they're broken and they need resurrected, uh, they've died. Uh, that's when God comes and says, but listen, I am the Jehovah Shema, the one who's here for you. I will never leave you or forsake you, Jesus says. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He never, ever, ever forsakes us or leaves, leaves us because he's the Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is here. It says, for you are, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, the rod and the staff is a picture of, of warfare, of battle. And here, the Hebrew is Jehovah Elohim, the Lord God of Israel. Elohim represents God in his relation to the whole world at large as creator, as providential ruler of all the affairs of men and controlling the operations of the earth. He, uh, he controls nature as Elohim. He controls kings and nations as Elohim. He controls the weather. He controls the seasons and the stars and the moon and the sun. As Elohim, he is in complete complete control, sovereign over creation. It comes from a word, root word that means strong one, mighty one. There are times in our lives when we just have to know that God's in control. When everything seems chaos to us, when everything just seems like it's a whirlwind and a storm, and everything is just whirling around us, we need to understand and remember that he is Jehovah Elohim, the one who's in control, the mighty God who holds everything in his hands. Some days all I need to know is God is on his throne because that's all I have is that knowledge that my sovereign God is controlling all things around me. That's how powerful Jehovah Elohim and Jehovah the strong one really is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is with me. I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the midst of my presence of my enemies. You literally prepare a table for me. This is Jehovah Nisi. Now, this is very cool. This is so exciting. The word Nisi means banner. He's our Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, the banner. Now, it's a distinguishing mark or a rallying call, like a banner in a battle. But in the book of uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4, he says that there's a banner over me that's love. There's a song that goes, He brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. 
It's an old Sunday school song. That's the Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, the, ba- the banner. We are given this distinguishing mark of protection, and that banner is love. Jehovah Nisi is love. He is the banner, that rallying place for us to do battle. He is the, it, it is the banner that says that I'm over you with love. I'm protecting you with my love. I am enveloping you in my love. That's what it means to have a Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, the banner over us. There is a banner over his banqueting table. Listen to what it says. You prepare a table for me, a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. This is the picture. As the Jehovah Nisi, we are face to face. We can be face to face with an enemy. We can have the opposing forces of evil before us. And God says, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to put a table out. I'm going to put a beautiful banquet on that table. I'm going to let you sit at that table. And then I'm going to put a banner as Jehovah Nisi over your head, as in Song of Solomon chapter 2, that says love. So when the enemy looks at you, or when the enemy comes against you, here's what he sees. He sees that I've taken care of you, that I've given everything you need on this banquet table to be full, to be fed, to be nourished. All the while, love hangs over me. Love is the banner that rallies me to battle on against the enemy. That banner, that Jehovah Nisi, that love is what conquers and battles the enemy. Of course, it was his, the Savior's absolute unconditional love that went to the cross for me, that fought the final battle for me over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. That he did that for me and he did it for you. He has this banner over you. Love, love bestowed upon you. Unconditional, redeeming love that says no matter what your enemies do, I've got your provision. I've got a rallying place for you to come. Now we know that that standard became the cross. We know that that rallying place for us became the cross. And God says, if you lift Jesus unto me, amazing things can happen because he's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, the banner. Says your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. When we are anointed, it means that we have been specially equipped, set aside, set apart, sanctified for his good work. And the word here is mekedesh, mekedesh, which means anointed, the, the God of the sanctifier, the Lord, the sanctifier. Oh, wait, I missed one. Jehovah Shaphat, the Lord, the judge. I forgot to say this. Remember when he, he, he put us a table, the banquet table before us in the presence of our enemies? He is Jehovah Shaphat, the Lord, the judge. You see, it's God who judges the enemies, not us. As the judge, he has judged the right, the wrong, the righteous from the unrighteous, the believer from the unbeliever, the sheep from the goats. He has judged that, and he will judge our enemies. I don't have to do that. He is the Jehovah Shaphat, the Lord, the judge, that God has already, already judged for us. McKinnish, McKinnish, the Lord, the sanctifier. He's the one who sanctifies me. He's the one who sets me apart. He set me apart in my life for this call on my life to be a teacher, to preach his word. I've had this call since I cannot rem- since I was a little girl, I have been teaching and been in love with him and have loved his word in amazing ways. I've heard it in song and and stories and I've written things and just uh, he's always been a part of my life. My call is a significant call and a part of my li- it is my life. And he set me aside. But that doesn't mean he doesn't set everybody else aside. He sets you aside to be a prayer or a Sunday school teacher. Or he sets you aside to be a vessel of holiness for him. He sets you and sanctifies you to be a mother or a father or a brother or a sister. You might be um, the one, uh, the custodian of a church. He has set you apart for such a great work as that. 
He has set you apart to to do for him and re- and equip you to do what he wants you to do for him. He has sanctified you. He has anointed your head with oil. You may have never been physically anointed, but he is giving you a special anointing of the Holy Ghost. He has put the Holy Spirit on you to accomplish all that he's required of you in your life. All that he wants from you, he has anointed you to do. And then it says this, you've anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. It says that as we go through life, some things follow us. Goodness and mercy follow us and surround us all the days of my life. Everywhere I go, if I walk in the paths of righteousness that he directs me in, as the Jehovah Tzikinu, the Lord, the righteousness, when he directs me in my paths, then what follow me are goodness, uh, mercy, um, peace, love, power. There are so many things. Well, Sabaoth is the Lord of hosts. Now, the, the hosts, the heavenly hosts, are angelic beings. And as the Lord of the hosts, as the Jehovah Sabaoth, he commands those angels to do our bidding or his bidding on our behalf. He, they are angels and they are sent to minister to us. And he's the Lord of hosts. He's the, 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 the sovereign power over all the angelic hosts. And when we need something, he dispatches the angels. There's a Daniel in the Bible prayed this great prayer, and he waited and waited for an answer. And when the, when the, the angel showed up, and the angel was Gabriel, Gabriel says to Daniel, I would have been here from the very first moment you prayed, but I was hindered in the spirit realm by the enemy, and I had to call Michael the archangel to come and help me get to you. What an amazing picture that God sends an angel. The minute you start praying, angels are sent to you to minister that answer. Sometimes they get held up in the spiritual realm by the enemies, but he never, never lets the angel not get to you. He always makes sure the answer comes through the angels. Even if it takes two or three to get the answer to you, he will get that ministering spirit, that ministering angel to you as the Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. That's what he promises to do. It says, Should your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It says, A man shall leave his mother, and a woman shall leave her home. As the bride of Christ, all of us who are the redeemed church, the bride of Christ, are going to go dwell in his house forever, the bridegroom, Jesus. We are his bride, we are his bride, and he is the bridegroom. And we are going to go dwell in his house forever because he is the Jehovah Ishi, the Lord, the husband. Did you know that Jeremiah chapter 3 says that he's married to the backslider? I love that he's married to the backslider. The New Testament says that we are his bride, the bride of Christ, and that Jesus is our bridegroom. He is our Jehovah Ishi, the Lord, the husband. Now, as husband, he protects, he takes care of, he honors and nurtures and cherishes. He supplies the need. He does all those things that a husband should do for a wife. And that's our Ishi. Whether you're a a woman or a man or a teenager or a child, you are married to him if you're the redeemed bride of Christ. You belong to him, and he is our Jehovah Ishi, the Lord, the husband. So let me do it this way. The Lord is my Jehovah Rohi, and I shall not want because you are my Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You make me to lie down in green pastures, and you lead me beside still waters, because you're my Jehovah Shalom, my God of peace. You restore my soul, because you're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, the healer, who restores everything that's broken in me. You guide me in paths of righteousness for your namesake, because you're the Jehovah Tzikinu, the Lord, the righteousness. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is here. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me because you're Jehovah Elohim, the Lord God of Israel. 
You prepare a table for me as Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, the banner, in the presence of mine enemies that you have judged because you are Jehovah Shaphat, the Lord, the judge. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy as Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, follow me and camp around me. They will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Jehovah Ishi, the Lord, the husband, forever and ever. 23rd Psalm. Everything you need to know about God. Everything we need from God. All who God is, is in six small verses. But let me just follow that up with this. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says that for in him, Jesus, all of the fullness of the deity dwells. In other words, when Jesus came to this earth, he became the fulfillment of Psalm 23. All the fullness of who God was in Psalm 23 is now completely, completely um, filled by Jesus. He has it all in him. He is the fullness of the 23rd Psalm. But here's what it says then in John chapter 1, verse 16. Remember, Colossians 2, 9 says that Jesus, all the fullness of the 23rd Psalm, is now in Jesus. Everything that God said he was to Israel in the, in the Old Testament, Jesus has now come to be fulfilled in the New. And all the fullness of the deity dwells within him. But here is John chapter 1, verse 16. For of his fullness, who's his? Jesus. For of Jesus' fullness, we have all received. In other words, the fullness that God was in Psalm 23 is now the fullness of Jesus in the New Testament. And he says, now when I go and you accept me as Lord and Savior, that fullness of who God is now dwells in us. John 1 16 again says, for of his fullness, we have all received. In other words, every part of God that I need lives in me. If I need righteousness, it's in me. If I need him here, he's here, it's in me. If I need provision as Jaira, he's here. If I need healing, it's here. I don't have to go looking for my healing or looking for righteousness. I don't have to go looking for ministering angels to come to my aid. I don't have to look over here for someone who will take care of me as Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, uh, issue the Lord, the husband. It's all in me. When I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, he dwells in the fullness inside of me. And he dwells in the fullness inside of you. So when you need him, Open up the 23rd Psalm and say, God, I know that all that you are dwells within me. I need you. And he will speak to you and say, you have all the fullness you need. All of it through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our God, and our soon coming King. That fullness is in each one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much for joining us again tonight. I want to remind you that starting next Thursday, March 21st, we will have our own show, Brushstroke Ministries. We'll have its own show called One Brushstroke at a Time. Tune in next Thursday, 6 o'clock, and we'll have something special for you from the Word of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.